On the last episode of STV, we had an epic two-day adventure where we rode from Thompson, Manitoba, all the way here to Churchill, some 550 kilometers, with more than half of it off trail. On this episode, the adventure is gonna continue here on the shores of Hudson Bay. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 57 years. And by Polaris, think outside. It's day three of our quest for the bay and we've made it here to Churchill on the shores of Hudson Bay. Now the last two days getting here have been incredible and definitely one of the most adventurous, adventure snowmobile rides I've ever been on. But this trip is not over yet because we're gonna spend the day touring around Churchill, a town that I've wanted to visit forever. But before we get to that, I wanna recap the ride that got us here. Our two-day ride to Churchill started off at Sasagu Lodge just outside Thompson, Manitoba, which took us on a beautifully maintained trail system, and the experience here reminded me a lot of riding in northern Ontario. With a more relaxed ride schedule for the day, day one was also a great chance for the group to get to know one another, as our goals for the day, which was to reach Gillam, was within easy reach. We had stops along the way to take in a couple of scenic areas with river rapids in the background and then to top off our gas tanks in Thompson before we continued to our overnight in Gillam. Day two of our ride was the real start of our adventure. From Gillam, we were going to ride off trail all the way to Churchill. Now for roughly half the distance to Churchill, we were going to follow the hydro line north. And as we watched the trees get smaller and smaller, the sense of how remote this region is really got bigger and bigger. With a welcome rest and warm up at McClintock by the train tracks that would eventually deliver us back to Thompson, the group was able to enjoy riding a frozen series of rivers where we would continue to wind our way north towards our destination of Churchill. We eventually found the orange building marking the end of the river ride as darkness was settling in on us. With one last push, we rode into Churchill with a true sense of accomplishment. What a ride, what a feeling, we made it. Now, if you're the type of person who likes to pay attention to details, you may have noticed that the machine I've been riding has changed from an Expedition to an Enduro, and let me tell you why. You see, on the first part of the trip, where we rode from Thompson up to Gillam, I noticed a small vibration coming out of the Expedition. Now, it wasn't bad, and I was fairly comfortable with continuing on, but on a trip like this, you really don't want to take any chances. So Al called down to Steve at Nickel City Motors, and Steve drove up with his own personal snowmobile, his Enduro for me to ride on the rest of the trip. Because you see, when you're doing an adventure like this one, you definitely don't want to take any chances with your equipment, and even the gear you're wearing, it has to be in top-notch shape. Being here now, it feels like I'm on the set of some documentary television series. It's a pretty surreal feeling. Now, I think Churchill is the type of place that most people have heard of or seen on TV, usually paired up with polar bears. Now, we're probably not gonna see any bears on this trip because they're a little farther out of town, but I think that's a good thing because we're gonna be out on the ice of Hudson Bay just with snowmobiles without the protection of one of these bad boys. But it doesn't matter, even though we're not gonna see any bears or probably not gonna see any bears, there's still plenty of things to see and do here in Churchill. Whoa! 
First up for the day's activities was a trip across the ice of the frozen Churchill River to the Prince of Wales Fort, which is a national historic site of Canada. In this place, you are literally stepping back in time to the days of the fur trade, Hudson's Bay Company, and the British. Turns out this remote outpost on the edge of the Churchill River in Hudson's Bay was a brutal and unforgiving place for the unfortunate souls who found themselves garrisoned here. Frostbite, scurvy, polar bears, black flies in the summer, the French, isolation, were all things faced by the troops here back in the 18th century. Eventually, the British just gave up and abandoned the fort, but to be standing in its ruins today, with the cold and wind biting at us in our modern gear, I couldn't help but feel sorry for the people who had no other choice but to endure their existence here. Many of them didn't, but they left behind a place that is truly amazing. Also, while touring the fort, we had two Parks Canada guides with us. One talking about the fort and the history here, and the other on guard. Remember those pesky polar bears? Well, the fort is right in their territory, and no one here at the fort or in the town of Churchill takes this threat lightly. The bears, and respect for their power, really do define Churchill and the people who live here. After the fort, we had the chance to explore the ice on foot. Now I'm sure this gave our guides cause for concern because even though the polar bears weren't supposed to be in the area, that doesn't mean there couldn't be one stocking the ice for a meal of seal or a tasty snowmobiler. But getting to walk through the giant ice ridges out to the edge of the water was the most memorable experience of this whole trip. And the photo we took here is the first one I show people when I talk about this adventure. And yes, we are jumping on the ice at the edge of the sea. Now we were pretty sure it was going to hold. Getting the chance to spend some time in this place, even though we didn't do a whole lot of riding today, was a real treat. After our two-day adventure getting here, Churchill turned out to be the real cherry on top of a very delicious sundae. Coming up after the break, I'm looking forward to touring a little bit more around Churchill. This segment is brought to you by Ford. I ended part one of the quest for the Bay Adventure on the last episode of STV talking about the sense of accomplishment that we all felt when we arrived here in Churchill on the shores of Hudson Bay. Now even if this trip was to end right now, it would still rank as one of my all-time favorite best adventures ever. But our trip here isn't over yet. Waking up to a cool, crispy day four on this adventure, the long days have been catching up, so it's nice to know we have an easy day around town before we board the train. Up first, more exploration around this unique community. Being here, experiencing this place, and the folks who call Churchill home, you'll find a real sense of community. Everyone here seems to know each other, and although there's a real spirit of individual self-reliance, you can tell this is a community where people work together to survive. And speaking of rugged individuals, we also had the chance to talk with Claude about one of the key tools they use to move gear and supplies around the tundra as snowmobilers and outdoorsmen, the Kamatik. So we're here in Churchill and one of the big reasons for us actually being able to make this adventure is this sleigh right here. And I wanna introduce you to the man who built this sleigh and knows everything there is about the Kamatik. Am I right, Claude? Kamatik. Kamatik. This, this is Claude Daudet, who is one of our intrepid guides that uh, that led us on the expedition from uh, all the way up here to Churchill. And I've been absolutely amazed watching these things go down the trail, how much load you guys are carrying, and how well they work behind a snowmobile. But these are designed off a traditional Inuit sled, these right? These are basic tr traditional ideas, and we kind of... Uh, with the snowmobile world, we kind of created our own Kamatex. Yeah. So uh, back in uh, thousands of years ago, they're used for dog sleds. And back in that time, they used to use uh, uh, probably a hide from a, a seal or something, a whale, and they would lash all the all the, the runners together. Yeah, and uh, the lashing is really the key for these things, right? Like there, there's no screws holding these things or nails holding these together. It's all about it's all lashing. Rope. Yeah. And uh, there's two different types of tying. Some tie individual and others tie, uh, like this one here, uh, four runners uh, a rope, and then another four runners, and another four runners. So and, it's all in the knots. And what's, what's the reason for that, that you're lashing them? Well, the idea is we want it to rock and roll. So because the land is so rough and uh, has uh, 
is so unforgiving. Uh, that's why they do it that way. Now, one of the interesting things, you've got uh, like an A-frame style hitch, which is rigid to the sled, so you can, you can slow it down. It's not going to get completely out of control behind you and come barreling in to rear end the snowmobile. But the hitch is set back from the very front of the runner a little bit. Why do you do that? Well, um, the way I got it set up here is uh, it's kind of a floating hitch, I call it. Yeah. And it kind of sits there and it, it bounces back and forth. So when, it, when I'm hitting bumps, it's floating along. And the length of the hitch, I have it six feet long. Mm -hmm. And a little bit longer is better because it does the same thing. So it's, everything's kind of yeah. floating along. Again, so, watching it go down the trail behind you, I mean, it was amazing how smooth it actually was despite the trail being fairly rough. And maybe that's because it's so long, it's spanning a lot of those bumps. Exactly. It doesn't go into stuff, yeah. it just goes right over top. Exactly, so a lot of guys have shorter hitches. Uh, some guys put their hitches on the outside and the hitches here. Yeah. And by the end of the day, your back's in three pieces. <laughs> so with the longer hitch, uh, yes, it's you know a little bit uh, over the top, but I mean, it does the job when you're pulling big loads. Again, it's amazing how, you know, this, this simple old technology of, of lashing everything together to keep it mobile and, and flexible and, and watching these things go down the trail. I, I've seen them before in other areas. I've seen them in, in Labrador before and I thought they were cool then. And this trip has totally reinforced that. Uh, I mean, to watch you guys set the pace you did, you guys were hauling everything. And it was amazing to watch them go down the trail. Yeah, and I, mean, I was going up to 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that's... For many miles. Yeah, oh, it worked out so good. Amazing, again. I'd love to build one of these things. I might have to take some measurements and, uh, and make a plan for myself so I can build one when I get home. Comatic building is a big art for, even for the north, more for the northern communities, how you build them, like it's really yeah. a, a big showpiece for, for everybody. Uh, us as well, the, uh, the more time you put in it, the better Comatic you get. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling me about the Comatic. Comatic, yes. The Comatic. My pleasure. Churchill reminds me of places like Dawson City, Yukon, or Happy Valley Goose Bay in Labrador, other isolated communities, but all so welcoming to travelers visiting their little corner of the planet. Coming here on the snowmobiling adventure of a lifetime, it was nice to relax a little bit while in town, taking in sights like the Insanitak Museum and its fascinating artifacts from a different time and culture, to seeing the tundra buggies and the new state-of-the-art electric versions. We also spotted the northern lights in the evenings, which was awesome, even if they weren't at their absolute brightest. And then we got to spend time with great people, both local to Churchill and other members of our little expedition. Yeah, what I really hope people will, will get from doing this trip is, uh, is just the sheer beauty of, of the north. Um, like there's, uh, there's some rivers, there's some ravines, there's some valleys, there's... Uh, there's, it, it's some, in my opinion, it's some of my favorite riding I've ever done. Um, and, and you get a mix of it. You get right thick forest to wide open barren lands um, with no snow. And you know, you're, sometimes you're riding on the tops of, uh, of the tundra soil, um, things like that, right? So it, you get one end of the other, um, you know, and you get the switchbacks, you get the turns, you get all that, the hills. And then you also get just the barren wasteland. Um, I think you put it best. One of you guys were saying that uh, you went up to the top of the bank and What's it look like up there? And one of you guys replied, it looks like the moon, <laughs> right? So it's, uh, that in itself is a beautiful thing to look at, right? So coming from, you know, the, the amount of kilometers that you travel, you see a lot of uh, diversity in the landscape. Um, and then, like I said, getting right out to the Hudson Bay, which is Arctic waters. It's, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the summer months, and if you're mid-August, you might get all three, and a lot of people do. You'll get the whales, you'll get the bears, and you'll get the northern lights. One of the highlights to Churchill is, is kayaking or paddleboarding with with beluga whales it's just phenomenal to see a, a wild animal the size of a beluga whale that wants to interact with you wants to see you is excited to swim alongside your kayak or your paddleboard it's just it's bar none i've been all over the world it's bar none one of the best things i've ever done and that's why i think i keep doing it every single year As our last day in town came to an end, I was a little sad that this part of the adventure was coming to a close, but our quest for the bay experience wasn't over yet. This is the trip that just keeps on giving. Our next part of this adventure is the boys are gonna be loading all these sleds up onto that boxcar over there, and then we're gonna be taking the train down to Thompson. 
There's just something civilized about taking the train and it's another one of the aspects of this adventure that I'm looking forward to. Right now though, I'm gonna go over where it's warm. This segment is brought to you by CKX. Other than by air or snowmobile as we've proven with this adventure, rail is really the only other way in and out of Churchill. This train is the lifeline to the outside world and our one-way ticket back to reality. Now this is definitely not a bullet train. This ride will eventually get us back to Thompson, but will rattle and slowly make its way along the tracks, making stops along the way to drop off or pick up people and supplies as needed. Settling in after our evening departure, we all got comfortable for the overnight trip, but the time given to us on the train also let us think back to the experiences of the last few days. So Al, talk to me a little bit about uh, the success of this trip. Are you happy with, uh, with how everything went down? Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, I think we've hit all the objectives that, that we wanted to. We had a great ride coming up the, uh, um, the Deer River, the second part of the trip um, from Gillum to, uh, to Churchill was excellent. Um, it hit everything that I wanted it to hit. But I mean, the adventure even continues today. I mean, we're on a train uh, going, and it's a long overnight train ride from Churchill down to Thompson. Um, was the train always sort of figuring into this whole package uh, to get people and sleds back down to Churchill? Yeah, yeah. There's only two ways to get out of Churchill, um, and that's by plane or by train. And uh, a lot of people haven't been on a train for a long time, you know, so this is another experience. So Via Rail has the, uh, has the train um, coming down from Churchill. It's 12 hours to Thompson. Um, our slides will be coming down on, on the uh, freight train. But uh, so we got, we got to do a, a nice little overnight trip on, on the train. And it's nothing better than falling asleep with a click, clack, click, clack, click, clack of the, of the track. So it, it was good. It was, so, you know, when you take a look at the guests and they, they had ex expectations, I think we've met all those expectations I had expectations I think I we've met all the expectations that I wanted to see and we can knock those things off our bucket list they all got a little plaque to mm -hmm. saying that they've uh, participated in the in the uh, in the tour so I mean that everything was great talking to the guests um, talking to the guides everybody seemed to be really happy with with the tour um, you know right from from uh, the sledding experience, uh, getting onto the powder on, on the Deer River and some of the other rivers. Um, so the whole sledding experience was important, right down to the food. I mean, the food at the hotels and the restaurants um, and the accommodations were great as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were we were treated pretty well uh, by all our partners uh, on the tour, and and I haven't heard any complaints from the guests uh, whatsoever. So I think it's been a very successful tour. Yeah, I, I've seen lots of smiles, and yeah. I think lots of people are making uh, memories that they're going to keep. With with them for a very long time. Now moving forward, if uh, somebody is, is watching this program and is interested in doing this tour uh, the following year in 2023, what are some of the steps that somebody would do in order to be able to, to become part of the next generation of tours next year? Yeah, if you wanted to do this trip uh, in the future, then go on the Heartland um, Travel and Tours website. Um, do your research on, on the trip, and then also take a look at yourself and your, your machinery. Um, get prepared. You can't just jump on the machine on the day of the tour. You've got to make sure that you're confident with your machine and, and your, yourself that you're, you're going to be able, able to take this, because we had great weather this trip, um, but you also saw that we ran into a little bit of a storm at the end of it. So, I mean, that's, you know, that, that could have happened in Gillum and we could have been traveling for 10 hours through, through a storm. So you want to make sure that you're prepared for, for every eventuality. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's going to, uh, has that spirit of adventure, um, that has that confidence in themselves and their sleds and their, their gear, you know, is this the type of tour that somebody is, is going to look back at for a long time and reminisce and remember? 
Yes, yeah, definitely. People are going to look back and, and say, I did that. I did that tour. And they've also met some great friends because the group really knits together because you're depending on everybody to, to work together um, to, to make this trip a success. So, yeah, you're going to have some real lifelong friendships by the time you come out. This segment is brought to you by Ultimax. Well, we've made it back down to Thompson after an incredible five day adventure that was truly once in a lifetime. At the end of the day, all I can say is I already wanna go back. There is so much left to experience, like seeing the bears off a tundra buggy or the belugas swimming in the Churchill River. Plus, there's still more to discover around the town of Churchill. We simply just didn't have the time to do everything. Maybe next time though, I don't ride into town on a snowmobile and that will be okay because any form of transportation you choose to explore in Northern Manitoba, I promise you it will be so worth it. So thanks for taking the time to watch and experience this adventure with me. I just hope I've done this story justice on STV because it truly has been one of my most memorable snowmobiling experiences ever. Now, an adventure like this definitely isn't for everyone, but if you're looking for a new snowmobile adventure, one that's unique and different and very much bucket listy, and one that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life, well, this was it. Closed captioning is brought to you by Yamaha. STV has been brought to you by CKX, where your passion. Best Western hotels and resorts, ready to get away, and by Ultimax Belts, performance-driven, performance-proven. Performance